How good it is to see all of you here at this Mass. This is the one time a year when we are all come together as a large diocesan family to celebrate our Catholic faith, and especially to celebrate our Catholic faith in Jesus' real presence in the Eucharist. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the ages, Jesus says, and how true that is of the Holy Eucharist. He indeed is with us all days until the end of time. Other religious bodies have their annual meetings and annual assemblies where they bring together all of their members in order to conduct church business. And how about us Catholics? What is the occasion where we bring together all of our members to conduct church business? Well, here in the Diocese of Charlotte, this Eucharistic Congress has become our annual assembly where we bring together all of the members or all of those who can come to conduct our business as a church. And what is the business especially that we are conducting here? It's the business of your spiritual life, feeding your soul. There is no denying the fact that there is a special spiritual benefit to coming together as a diocesan family to celebrate our faith in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. We're spiritually renewed by being in the company of thousands and thousands of our brothers and sisters from across the diocese. Our hearts and our souls are spiritually rejuvenated by being in this large gathering of the faithful. At our Eucharistic procession on Saturday morning, at our Eucharistic Holy Hour, also on Saturday morning, at this closing Mass of the Congress and through all of the events of the Congress. The sheer numbers lift us up by being together with all of our brothers and sisters. And it's a spiritual benefit that just cannot be repeated elsewhere. It's an intangible spiritual benefit that we receive. A spiritual renewal by being at the Congress and all centered on the Eucharist. The theme of our Eucharistic Congress this year comes from the song of praise that Mary spoke at her visitation to her cousin Elizabeth. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. Soul and greatness. Of course, the Blessed Mother's soul is great because she is sinless. She is the Immaculate Conception. Her soul is completely filled with God's light and God's grace. There's no shadow at all of any darkness or sin in her. And she is carrying the Christ child within her at that moment that she makes that proclamation. My soul is proclaiming the greatness of the Lord. Magnificat anima mea dominum. you can adopt those words of our Blessed Mother and apply them to yourself. Your soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. First of all, your soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord because you have an immortal soul that is created directly and immediately by God. A soul that is endowed with spiritual powers of intellect and free will and that in itself is great and proclaims God's greatness. A rational intellect with understanding and free will, how good God is, how much we proclaim God's greatness just on the human level of how he has made us as human creatures. But your soul receives an even greater greatness when it is filled with God's sanctifying grace and it is elevated to even a higher level of greatness by His sanctifying grace. At your baptism, each one of you became a beloved child of God, adopted into God's family, and your soul began at that moment at your baptism to proclaim the greatness of the Lord as a baptized son or daughter of God proclaiming the greatness of the Lord 
in a new way with that sanctifying grace. And confirmation then later sanctified you further as a child of God and made your covenant with God even stronger through that anointing of the Holy Spirit. And as you continue in life, the Holy Eucharist is nourishing God's divine life within you, and your soul continues to proclaim the greatness of the Lord because Christ's body and blood is sanctifying you. Christ is in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him, and I in her, we hear in today's gospel. Christ in you, because you partake of his flesh and blood. Your soul is indeed proclaiming the greatness of the Lord because of his sanctifying grace. One priest said to me recently, that he really enjoys the Eucharistic Congress. He said he feels like St. John Vianney hearing confessions all day long, just like St. John Vianney used to do. Thank you for asking your priests to help you. Thank you for asking your priests to do something for you which no other man can do, absolve you from sins. The Lord wants holy people. The Lord wants holy married couples. The Lord wants holy families, holy teenagers, holy children, holy single people, holy young adults, holy priests, holy deacons, holy consecrated religious, holy seminarians. He wants holy people in his church. And how else is that holiness going to happen if it is not helped through the sacrament of confession? Ask the Lord to make your priests holy men of God. What is the condition of a soul that proclaims the greatness of the Lord? It is a soul that is living in God's grace. This Holy Mass is the high point of the Eucharistic Congress. Jesus invites you to partake of his sacrifice in this gospel that we have just heard from this Mass. And he's speaking in that gospel in term of sacrifice, where he invites you to eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. In ancient Israel, A sacrifice was a sacred meal shared between God and the human being. And Jesus is inviting you to this sacred meal of his body and blood and reminding you that he is the sacrifice of the new covenant and he wants to sanctify you by your partaking of this sacrifice. A meal that is shared between God and the human being, the sacrifice. And of course, Jesus, understanding this, brought that ancient understanding present to us. The sacrifice, you must eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. Saying in there, the Son of Man is the sacrifice for the salvation of the world. Also in ancient Israel, to partake of the sacrifice and share that sacred meal with God, the human being first had to be purified. He could not partake unless he had gone through the necessary purifications. And to partake of Jesus' sacrifice, the requirement of being purified is still necessary. Make sure that confession is a part of your spiritual growth. We're celebrating the year of the Immaculate Heart here in our diocese as we honor the 100th anniversary of our Blessed Mother's appearances at Fatima. In imitation of the Immaculate Heart 
and of her visitation to her cousin Elizabeth, let your soul, let your life proclaim the greatness of the Lord to everyone whom you meet. The Blessed Mother carried the Christ child within her during that visit to her cousin Elizabeth. And it was because of that she was proclaiming God's greatness. And you carry the, the presence of Christ within you in your visit to everyone you meet along your way. And you also proclaim the greatness of the Lord. Share the holiness and the love and the joy of this Eucharistic Congress with everyone you meet.